Hi Creator, good afternoon. This is Robin with the Desert Rose Creates and today we're going to do some silk screening with our reusable silk screens that are available on my website. But we're going to create another bleached flannel advertisement on the back of this. And then we're also going to do chalk paste screening on this picture. So we're going to start out with the shirt using our ink. I'm going to set this down. And uh, I want to make sure you can see me well, so let me just check the feedback. Great, there we are. And we'll get started. All right, so we'll talk about these uh, later when I do the picture. But we're going to work on a bed and breakfast themed advertisement for the back of this flannel shirt. It's a brand new transfer I just got in, so we'll have to cut that up. But we got to get our mat ready. This is a what we call an ink mat, and what it does, it kind of has a tacky side that holds the fabric in place, and then it also keeps the ink from going through. If you were slipping this in a sweatshirt or a pillowcase or something, it keeps the ink from going through to the other side. But I'm just going to open the shirt up wide. Hi, Anne-Marie. And just lay it down. My, my uh, mat isn't very sticky anymore, so I'm just going to lay it down and stretch it out here. It does stick a little bit, I guess. The wording is very wide, so it's a good thing this is a larger shirt. So we can get it all on. And I'm just going to smooth it out so we have a nice smooth surface to silk screen on. And I like to make sure I have the middle. I'm going to go by the tag here. And it looks like it's falling right about in here. Will be the middle. Alright, so. I'm glad you're watching today. And if you'd like to share the love, push that arrow button down there. Maybe you know some other creators, crafters that want to learn a new craft. And I think chalking with Chalk Couture is a wonderful way to create. A lot of the hard work is done for you. They design these silk screens that are reusable washable and reusable and you can use ink products or chalk paste products on our silk screens either one depending on what surface you're putting it on so we need to cut this apart it has lines of where we're going to cut these and then we'll decide our layout on how we want to lay it on the back of the shirt hi sherry So, are you ready for the holidays? I'm not. <laughs> I think my husband and I are going to go do some Christmas shopping tonight. We also need to get groceries, which yes, I could do on my own, but I would rather be here creating than going to the grocery store. And I always feel like I'd never know what to buy. I'm not I'm I'm okay I'm okay of a cook, but I hate making the decisions of what to make and what to fix. That's my weakness. I'm not very creative in the kitchen. My mind is here creating this way. So, does anybody else have that problem? You just need to get stockings. Yeah, I need to we have a few gifts purchased, but that's it. I really, really have never been this late in getting everything done. I have absolutely nothing wrapped under the tree. I'm horrible. It's been a crazy two months with this whole uh, health problem. I, well, I don't really have a health problem. Saying I had a mass on my lung and then to find out it's um, a very rare hernia 
on my diaphragm that my liver has gone up into and so today I had to go see the lung doctor and it's just there's just a lot going on that preoccupied my time I guess of getting other stuff done other than creating that must be my stress release is to create so it's a good thing I have chalking to do to help me with that so we have bed and breakfast okay and they got the rooster on the weather vane we got some little leaf branches and one says be our guest and this one says where you make both meaning you make your bed and you make your breakfast which is kind of funny so um, I just need to decide what I want to put on here and about whereabouts we're going to put it and then um, I'm these probably aren't really my colors to wear so I'm not like in love with this coloring but it's blue and brown and like a curry mustard color so I like to go with the dark color because it's going to show off the best off the fabric and so we have this brown which is called bark but I'm going to mix a little black and get a get a darker brown um, I like the rich darker brown better and then we'll um, put it all the same color on so I'm going to have to mix some ink colors to achieve the color I want because I don't have to tell you what this brown <laughs> hmm. Not my favorite brown color, so. All right, it is pretty big. So let's get this on here. I think I'll do bed and breakfast where you make your, where you make both. And then we'll do the rooster. And we'll go ahead and stick these in here somewhere. And then be our guest. I'll, I'm gonna put it all on just to take up the space, I think. So maybe we'll just do one one piece at a time so we can get our spacing good okay I'm gonna fold this in half to see where the middle is okay that's one way of figuring that out so we kind of have a nice little crease there and remember the tag in the middle so about right in here is the middle of our shirt Go ahead and place this on. I still have the crease of the fold. And somewhere in there. And then we just kind of make sure that it is straight, and I'm guessing it's not. You kind of hope that the plaid is on straight, so I'm going to kind of go with the lines of the plaid. and get it on straight that way. Okay, so let's set, set this aside a little bit and we'll mix our colors. Um, try and find something to mix it in. I got this little ceramic dish that I keep my stir sticks in. I could use that. Hi Beverly, hi Linda. Thank you for watching. We are going to do a couple projects today. First, we're going to ink on this uh, bleached flannel that I had bleached out earlier, um, probably um, quite a while ago, a good month ago or so. It was still kind of warm out, so I could do it outside. Okay, so I got this cleaned up. Have any baking in it? Oh my gosh. You are baking gingerbread cookies. Awesome. No, I don't have any baking done. Last year I baked like for the first time practically forever because I've always, you know, I always had my store. So I was always working retail. And last year I did do some baking. And um, I might do some. But we're not really going anywhere for Christmas. Just the kids are coming over. So. So, um, I'll probably, I like to, I want to make some coconut, chocolate covered coconut balls. And I 
kind of think I made them last year. I was kind of think maybe they had almond in them. Maybe I just put almond. I can't remember, but I love coconut. I like like almond joy. Love, love, love. So I'm gonna make probably make those. And John and I like peanut brittle. So last year we made peanut brittle. That was really good. So I might make some peanut brittle, but uh, I just don't need to eat that stuff. So I don't bake much at all. So, okay, I got, can you see that? No. So I got a little bit of brown, it's called bark. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black ink to it because I want a deep, rich brown color, okay? And we kind of need to mix enough to hopefully do the whole shirt. So I'm just mixing this in. See if we can darken that brown up. And it has a little bit, but I think I even want it darker. So I'm gonna add more ink and actually probably more brown too. I, I wanna make sure, and I feel like uh, the fabric absorbs more product versus a board, like if you're putting chalk chalk paste on. So probably need more ink. So I'm gonna do another blob of the light brown, the original brown, and some more black. Like I said, I want it to be a dark brown. So I'm just mixing it. Of course, you can mix our ink colors together and you can mix, mix our chalk colors together, but do not mix your chalk paste and your ink. Two, two totally different products. Okay. Okay, I still want darker. So I'm gonna go more black. I want like Hershey chocolate. Hershey chocolate. Will I get it? I don't know. That's how I do my chalk paste. I mix the bark color with chocolate and I get a beautiful chocolate pudding color. So this is kind of muddy. But it's better than the lighter. It's got a lot of, that bark has a lot of red in it, I think. And I just feel like I'm not getting that chocolate brown. I'm not sure what to add to it. I'm just gonna keep adding more black. Sorry, this is taking so long. But yes, baking is not really my thing. Cooking is not really my thing. I like to cook with other people or bake with other people. And, you know, just have fun that way. But um, if my mind is thinking of other things, I don't really want to bake. I can't turn my mind off of projects to make and. So, yeah. I don't know. This is kind of a weird color. It's turning kind of gray brown. Not really, not really Hershey chocolate. something I don't know that doesn't make any sense oh well we might have to go with this color it's kind of almost, almost a green brown it's weird it's a weird color oh well all right let's go with it we'll just go with it okay 
So we got the bed and breakfast across here. We'll put that on first and then we'll work our way down with the rest of it. Go ahead and use this size. So, what's everybody else's favorite goodies to make for the holidays? I like the coconut balls, peanut brittle. Some of the other stuff gets almost too sweet for me. Like when you put candy bars in cookie dough, it gets almost too much for me. I just like, I don't know, it's too sweet. Do you guys have a favorite? Do you use a heat press? Yes, I will use a heat after this dries. You want your ink to dry really well. Sometimes I, usually I just wait to the next day to heat press it. I have an easy press from Cricut, but you can use your iron. Just do not use steam. About a medium heat for four minutes. You wanna put a piece of parchment paper over the inked area to protect your iron. And uh, the heat press, I hear different things. I hear anywhere from 305 to 350 degrees. So I put it in the middle and do about 30 to 40 seconds. Again, with parchment paper over it. Okay, I'm just making sure the ink is down in the fabric well. All right. Let's take that section off. I'm gonna lay, I have a little tub of water down here, so I'm gonna lay that in, in the water. Let's get it wet so the ink doesn't dry on it. Hi, Karen. Do you use heat press? Yes, let's see what else. Add in, I could have added a little yellow. It was, it doesn't look too bad on here now, but it's still not the brown I really wanted. Um, I know your decorating is, yeah, I still didn't get on decorating my house since I had such a weird fall with, with doctor's appointments and all that good stuff. The good news, I don't know if you heard all that, but I ended up getting a, um, I have a, I was born with this hernia hole in my diaphragm apparently, but did not know it. And then, um, at some point my liver has gone into the, up into my diaphragm, part of my liver. Um, and I have been coughing a lot, which could be caused by that, but it also, we all, I went to the lung doctor today. It might be also caused, um, which I think could be allergies. Cause I feel like since it's gotten really cold that my coughing has gotten better. So, um, so we're going to start some allergy medication to see if that helps. But anyway, it's kind of like which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did, the, as far as the cough, is it caused by other reasons or is it caused by the whole diaphragm thing? So anyway, I had kind of a weird fall and just was feeling, uh, well, the first few weeks were kind of scary because they thought I had a mass on my lungs. So it was kind of scary. And then, um, so I felt like I was just kind of behind on everything. Bed and breakfast where you make your mom. Let's see. How do we want to lay this out here? Um, so yeah. But I did get m most most of my decorations out. Um, I, I, the last couple of years in this house, I did put a tree up in my front living or my front bedroom that faces the guest bedroom that faces the street. I had a little skinny white tree in there and then I put a lot of bright colors on it. I didn't put that tree up. I kind of told my grandkids that they could help me do that. And then they never, the time never really came 
that they could come and help me. So it, it, it didn't get done, but that's okay. Who knows? We still might do it. No, we won't. It's too late now. But Okay, so we got our rooster. I think this part's funny where you make both. But I don't know if I just want to be, be our guest or where you make both. Um, so I think I'll probably put the leaves in there. Or I could put that up there. Let's bring this, let's bring the rooster down. Yeah, you make both. So, hi Joe. So yeah, we're talking about what is your favorite treat to make for the holidays? Um, I like coconut balls covered with chocolate. Those are probably my favorite. And that's probably because it's my favorite, one of my favorite candy bars is the Almond Joy. Okay, so let's put where you make both. We're doing this bleach flannel um, shirt that I had already bleached out. And now we're adding the bed and breakfast type advertisement on the back. And these flannels are basically for myself. I'll just wear them around the house. So I made um, a couple of them more for my daughters and then I made the reindeer one and I'm gonna make another one. I have one more bleached out that I haven't decided what to put on it yet. I want it to be more of an everyday. I don't want. I don't want it to be holiday, or, or overly Christmassy. So I'm just I decided. Okay. So I mixed the bark colored ink and black to get this darker brown. That's where I got that color from. And I have a pan of water down here that I am sticking my dirty transfers in because we will wash them. I will wash them. And there's my little towel. And uh, we use them again. I like those pretzel reindeer with the Rolo candies and M&Ms. Yes, I like pretzels with candy. I like the salt with the sweet. But again, I'm I don't like a lot of sweet sweet. But yes, those are good. And in, fun and easy to make, especially with the kids. With Miss Vivi, she likes to make, she likes, as she calls it, craftuses. <laughs> she likes to create crafts. Okay, so let's do our rooster. Yep, so we're just doing everything in one color. So I'm just pressing on the transfer and then we'll squeegee over the ink over the silk screen to get our print. This will make a cute sign too for uh, like your guest room or just in an entryway or something like a back entryway, maybe. <laughs> or in your kitchen. Anybody else have a favorite treat they like to make for the holidays? Maybe that's what you're doing now. Sherry says she's baking ginger cookies right now. 
I am terrible at it. I'm terrible at figuring out what to make for meals. I'm really just not very good at it. As I get older, I'm getting worse. And I probably because my husband took over doing a lot of the cooking when I had the store, so I kind of got out of practice. And then baking is fun. I like doing it with people. Although last year I did it all by myself. I did a bunch of baking and I really enjoyed it. I really got into it. But I haven't done any of it this year. There's our rooster. Because to me, this is, this is more fun. Creating than baking. So yes. There's our beautiful rooster. Now we got to do the be our guest and we'll do these little uh, leaves. I think I'll do them up here. Something like that maybe. Make sure I keep you straight. Hmm. Decide where those need to go. So yeah, the ink is wet, so I don't want to touch touch it with um, our transfer pieces or my fingers. If you get ink where uh, you don't want it to be, then it can be a mess. Pressing that in, smoothing it on. Let's get some more ink. Some of the classics, like the peanut butter cookies with the chocolate stars on them. They call them peanut butter blossoms. Those are probably some of my favorite cookies. Nothing, and, and a good sugar cookie is good. My, my daughters would laugh because last year or the year before, I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna really get into decorating cookies. Like, that's something creative, right? So I bought all kinds of, I don't know, I can't remember what I bought. Oh, the pouches with the tips on them. And I was like, okay, we're gonna do this. And it turned out kind of bad. It was like a Pinterest fail. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm not, I'm not so good at this at all. And maybe it's just the frosting didn't turn out right or something, I don't know. I'm sure. I could do better, but yeah. Hi, Brenda. We're almost done with this. I'm just trying to decide where to put these. I kind of need them the same on both. I'm just trying to decide where to put them. Right there, maybe. So yes, after this ink dries, I usually just let it dry uh, overnight and then I will heat set it with my easy press. You can use an iron. Just use a no steam, medium heat for about four minutes. Do the front and the back, lay a piece of parchment paper over the ink area so you don't that's just kind of to protect your iron so you don't get the ink on the iron but um, yeah but i'm gonna use my easy press like i said earlier i've seen different directions or heard different from 305 degrees to 350 degrees so i do it about 
335 and for about 40 seconds front and back making sure I get the ink in all the areas and then you can wash it and it'll stay permanent it's just like anything you would buy it's gonna have it's gonna be on there forever even if you got ink or you did on a on something and you didn't heat set it it's still gonna be there forever there cute I don't think we want another one oh all right that is my shirt set these up here and I'm just going to clean off my squeegee real majority of it here before I throw that in the water and then I will wash all this ink out of the uh, little dish that I made I, I uh, mixed the bark and the black to get a darker brown for my shirt and yeah, we're gonna set this aside. Now we're gonna uh, chalk on a pitcher, a metal pitcher, not pitcher, but pitcher that you pour. Okay, so I'm gonna set this over yonder so not to disturb it until it dries a little bit and then I'll take the mat off the back and let it dry. Okay. That did turn out cute. I hope you can see it. I didn't really show it to you. Let's see if you can see it. I'll wait. I have to wait for the delay. There. Turned out cute. Okay. Once that gets done and I uh, can photograph it after it dries. Okay, so. Hopefully you saw on my, on my page the picture uh, sign that I made with the fern. They actually have um, three botanicals. And I just got the two, the fern and then this one, eucalyptus. And then there's another one, but I didn't get it. So I started out with, I had three of these. Now these I got from a wholesale company. I still buy wholesale from a few companies and I painted one black and one, this one in the raw silk color but I'm gonna put another coat on this one before I chalk on it now it's not the smoothest smoothest because it has um, some paint removed so it's not completely smooth it's just kind of a metal tin but we're gonna try and do this uh, eucalyptus on it I'm just gonna do it in an an off-white color um, and I, I don't know if I'll add anything else to it I think I'm just gonna do the eucalyptus um, and then I'll decide if I want to add any words to it but this is almond so I'm gonna do the almond I think they'll be really classy on there so I commented on my page about how I'm seeing a lot of fern, ferns in um, the wholesale catalogs that I look at to order for the store. And um, I started noticing ferns last year, but this year I think there's even more of them. So I love the simplicity of it, of the little botanical plants on signs. Um, so that's why I made that one yesterday. I did add a sentiment, um, there's no place like home. And it turned out really pretty. And that I used like four different shades of green. I should have grabbed it. It's, it's, I should have grabbed it so I could show it to you. I used four different grades, uh, colors of green and just kind of did a messy, we call it the messy technique where you just kind of mix colors. And so yeah, it turned out really neat. And then the sentiment in black. Okay, so I added a little bit of water to it. You want it no runnier than this. This is almost too runny, but we'll see. If I can get that to dry out a little bit. Let me put my inks away while that, that's sitting there. Yeah, any more questions?
questions? So what else is everyone doing besides baking, wrapping gifts? I still have to shop <laughs> some more. Oops, wrong lid. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna try to do some shopping tonight. It's kind of funny, the uh, last weekend, Friday, we had to head to a Tumwa, which is in southeast Iowa, over towards where we used to live, for a wedding Friday night, and we got there um, early. So we went to Kohl's, and I bought an outfit for each of the grandkids, and some socks. And so I laughed that we went you know, four hours east to Ottumwa, Iowa to go Christmas shopping when we live right here in Omaha. <laughs> so crazy, but I did get that done. And then I have a toy for each of the, for the two kids. I still need something for Chase and, and some little things, but, and then I have pretty much nothing for my kids. <laughs> so, yeah, not ready for Christmas at all. All right, this is the eucalyptus. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it more on the side because I'm thinking I might do one on each side. So we'll see what it looks like. And like I said, it's not the smoothest um, surface. So I hope that it goes on well. No, I think I need to pull that down. It doesn't want to lay the best like that. So because of it going up, I'm gonna have to do like half half at a time. This half and then lay this half down. Unless I would cut that right there, and I don't really want to cut it, so. Let's see what it does. Get all the air bubbles out. It's going to be important because we're on this rounded surface. Almond paste, chalk paste that we're going to use on this silk screen. Don't want to press too much because if you press too much, you can just pop up the stickiness side of the transfer by putting too much pressure on it. So I'm just kind of going over it lightly. Hoping that it stays down. Concentrate on this side. Get it down. And kind of pick it up a little bit so it doesn't dry in the silk screen.
so I didn't really finish the story of my hernia. They are not going to repair it because it would be a really huge surgery and with, without much benefit. So it's just something I have to live with. Oh my gosh, did that turn out gorgeous or what? Love it. That is really pretty. Super pretty. I'm gonna do the other side, but this needs to dry first. So I think I wanna do it on that side also. Because I made it left-handed. Because I'm a left-handed person. So definitely probably wanna do the other side. So um, I will just, I'll just end the live and do it later because I want to dry it and I'm probably going to wash the silk screen before I do that because I don't want, yeah, it's kind of gone through. So I want to wash this and make sure this is well and dry before I lay it down and put it on that side. But that turned out really pretty just by itself. When the, when the jock, chalk paste is all dry on both sides, I will put a wax paste over it to seal in and harden that um, chalk paste. So I have the dark stain or I have the plain non-natural. I'm probably gonna use the natural on it because I love the crisp uh, comparison of the negative black space and then the almond color. So I don't think I wanna darken it anymore with the dark paste. I think I'm gonna use the natural paste on it. And like I said, when then when that when the um, wax paste dries, that will seal that all in and harden, harden the paste up, the surface up so it can't um, get scratched or scrape off as easy if it has a protective coating on it. You could spray on a polyurethane on it but I don't like to mess with going out to the garage and having to spray um, and having that all over. So I just use the wax paste and it works out good for me, but isn't that pretty? It turned out really neat. So um, if, you, if you're just getting on, um, go back and watch it. I did a uh, inking on the back of a bleached flannel and then uh, we chalked on this picture that I had painted earlier. It started out this red rustic and I think that this is looking a lot more like a modern farmhouse look and just kind of more modern in general so I painted that one I also painted one in an off-white which needs a second coat I like to use fusion mineral paint you could paint just about anything with fusion mineral paint so that's the paint I used and you have to get this from a local retailer or um, the shop that I sell my designs in sells it so if you can't find it anywhere uh, let me know and um, we can get it shipped to you but if you go to fusion mineral paint uh, website they have a store locator that you can get it from or if they're more local or closer to you then maybe they can ship it to you too so hello from Georgia hi Jill was scrolling and saw you were on great and sherry is watching two sherry's so thanks guys um happy holidays if i don't see you or hear from you before then merry christmas happy new year and uh go get your baking and what else any crafting you want to do get that done have a little fun with that um yeah happy chalking and I will chalk with you later. Goodbye.